Hi, YouTube family and podcast family. Today I wanted to talk about what happens or how do we find answers when we're looking for love and answers after our experience with the narcissist, after being discarded or after an abusive relationship or toxic relationship. There are so many people out there nowadays giving advice and I just want to let you know, be careful, of course, um, who you listen to. I, I don't ever follow anybody's advice 100%. I always question, you know, and I also think it through what, what they're saying because people make mistakes. You know, they can be very well intentioned, but they make mistakes. And in today's environment where there's so much, um, so much discord between men and women and it seems like they're at odds with each other. They're fighting one another for dominance. They're fighting one another for control of a relationship. They're blaming each other for the for the destruction of the relationship. And it seems that like not many people want to take responsibility for their part of it. So I want to direct you towards that to people who, you know, find people who actually challenge you a little bit at least to take some responsibility for your part and to think a little bit about what's being said. Because right now there are so many people out there who've been hurt and wounded, who are angry and bitter, who are vengeful. And you got to be careful of that because listening to them is a disaster because they are still in a place where they want to take out vengeance or they're coming from a place of woundedness or pain and they're not really giving the best advice. They may give pretty good advice actually about one area and I, I would say that would be protection, like how to protect your heart, how to um, be careful about what you get into and what to beware of. Now that I do agree with, um, when people talk about that who are still angry and bitter or vengeful because they're very raw from that experience already. So that's one thing. You can listen to that, but be very careful about where they might lead you because people who are still stuck in that part of their life may lead you to a place you don't want to go. They may lead you to where they are, where they're still bitter or angry and or resentful. So they could keep you stuck there or lead you there, even though you are not wanting to go there, you're hoping to heal, you're hoping for answers, you're hoping that you're going to get stronger. And what could happen is you do build uh, pretty good walls and protection and tactics for that, which is good, but you don't want to stay there. You don't want to just build walls and learn how to manipulate other people or how to get control or dominate uh, a relationship. You want to be able to get into healthy relationships. That's what you want. But what I'm seeing from both sides of the aisle, okay, men and women, is that there seems to be this anger where each side feels taken advantage of. Each side feels that they're the victim. Each side feels that the other sex is to blame for all the problems in their relationship. And I want to say that's not true. It's not true to say that there was this perfect man in this relationship and it was all the woman's fault. Or there was this perfect woman and in the relationship it was all the man's fault. I don't believe that because it takes two people to get into a relationship. And I don't know about you, but I don't know, I don't think I know anybody who's completely whole and without any any uh, baggage and has no pain in their past. You know, we each come into these relationships and we carry these things with us. So the people you're listening to, they're still carrying their baggage. And if they're still carrying their baggage, they're going to lead you to a place that's very dark and scary and lonely, even though you might look at them and think, but they're, they look so successful and they look so happy. But if all they're preaching is bitterness and anger and how to take advantage of the other person and how to use them so that you don't ever get hurt again, what they're trying, what they're going to do is they're going to isolate you. That's not the way to build a relationship. I want you to be aware of that. It is a way to protect yourself, but protecting your, yourself at all times, at all costs, 
leads to loneliness. So the goal here is to build relationships where there can be trust. It's not that you want these relationships so that you can use other people so they can make you happy and you protect yourself so you'll never be wounded by them and then you discard them once you're done with them or once they insult you or disrespect you or they no longer play the role you want. Because all that hap- that happens with that is you end up in a train wreck. You're going to end up with people who you're going to use or they are going to use you they're going to get wiser in how to use you you're going to get wiser on how to use them and that's what i'm afraid is being exchanged right now a lot between um the two different camps if you will where they're teaching each other how to take advantage of the opposite sex they're teaching each other how to use the partner so that they don't get used they're teaching each other how to protect themselves emotionally with distance and with uh with controlling you know habits in in the relationship and i understand setting boundaries but boundaries are not set to control people boundaries are supposed to be set to protect both sides It's not to control the sides. It's to protect your individuality. So look at who you're listening to. If their life, okay, if one aspect of their life looks great and beautiful, but their relationship aspect of their life looks like a a disaster, be careful about listening about to them for relationship advice. Be careful that you don't become a Hugh Hefner. And what I mean about that is, yeah, on the outside, I think I think a lot of men thought, wow, this guy's got it made. He's got all these 20 something year old beautiful women, you know, all over him. And he, you know, at his beck and, and call living in his mansion, you know, they've got this, sadly enough, a business arrangement. It's not love. It's a business arrangement. And what I'm hearing a lot of times is people are settling for business arrangements when it comes to relationships. And that is such crap. I'm sorry. But, you know, if you have watched any of the interviews with the women after Hugh Hefner, I think it's actually before he passed away. But these 20-something-year-old playboy, whatever, bunnies, right? They come out and they say how disgusting it was to have sex with him. How they laughed at him behind his back. How they used him and looked down on him as a human being. You know, they could use his money, but this, this is how they saw him. That's the kind of people who are trying to lead you into those, you know, kinds of relationships. You know, if people are leading you into that kind of a relationship to make you think it's beautiful, they're wrong because it's not a beautiful relationship. What you want is somebody who's going to be able to lead you through a path that they have traveled and it's a hard path and they're going to, they will have seen relationships where um, they've made mistakes, the other person's made mistake, their mistakes, they're willing to admit their own mistake and where they grew. And they want to share that growth with you, what they learned, right? Now, those are the people you want to follow. Those are the people who you who you want to listen to. And especially if they are now in great relationships, if they've shown that they are in sustainable, long lasting, loving, respectful, back and forth, you know, give and take relationships where there's respect and healthy boundaries, not just boundaries to control the other person. If you're setting boundaries to control the other person and they're setting boundaries to control you, it's going to be a disaster. So you want to find people who have gone through this, found the way, you know, were able to survive all kinds of trials in their relationship and they can teach you how to survive those because what we're looking for nowadays, and sadly enough, are fi- um, quick fixes. And the quick fixes where you set up boundaries and you try to control the other person and you distance yourself and you put up walls, that's not going to get you where you ultimately really want to go. It, there's a, there's going to be a lot of hard work, long days, long nights, working on yourself. There's going to be a lot of reading, a lot of education, a lot of uh resources that you're going to have to pour into yourself to become the kind of person that you want to be. And once you become the kind of person you want to be and you follow the instructions of people who have made it, you know, they're, they're working on who, you know, being better people and you see that they are really wonderful, better people. They're stronger, they're smarter, they're more caring. They're, they're the whole package, really. 
You know, they're successful, but they also have loving relationships, not just user relationships, user abuser relationships. You don't want that. The user abuser relationships, you actually have to work at those too, by the way. (laughs) But in the end, you don't get the benefit of the kind of relationship that's healthy. The healthy ones are going to lead you to amazing, beautiful places in your life. And they talk about, oh, sex isn't good in those types of relationships. Uh, How would they know? How would these people know what sex is like in a healthy, loving, caring relationship? They're not in one. And I want to tell you, sex is amazing. It is mind blowing when you're in a healthy, beautiful relationship. It is deep and it is strong and it is plentiful. It is such crap that these people who can only have fly-by-night relationships tell you that there's no good sex relationship in the long-term relationships or in healthy or loving relationships. What do they know? That's all I can say is what do they know? (laughs) They are so wrong. And I want you to be careful when you listen to that, okay? But back to some points, I do agree with them. You do need to protect yourself from abusers and users. You have to be careful about the person you select to be with. I mean, choose wisely. That's my advice. Choose wisely. And then look at what bait you are using to choose or to catch the people that you're interested in. You know, uh, (laughs) I'm just looking at men and women, okay? And this is very stereotypical. So don't, you know, I'm stereotyping. Okay, a man may use his wealth and flash it around to try to catch a woman. And I'm like, okay, if that's your bait, what kind of woman do you think you're going to catch? You're going to catch a materialistic woman. And then they're, they're going to complain, why is she only after my money? Well, what did you lead with when you tried to catch her? And then there's the woman who's wearing very scandalous clothing or hardly any clothing, right? And acting very uh, promiscuous, well, shall we say, um, on their very first meeting. And she's trying to catch a guy. And she's like, how come this guy doesn't, uh, doesn't commit to me? Well, what were you using to catch this guy? You're using promiscuity. Why is he not committing? Because he's not interested in committing. He's interested in promiscuous women. So I'm just saying, when you listen to these people giving advice, and then they're wondering, why do we always end up with all these loser people? uh, And then they don't even tell you, well, what kind of bait are we asking you to use? They don't even curb that. They don't teach you that the bait matters in what kind of person you're going to catch. So YouTube family and podcast family, I hope that this has helped. I hope that you are more careful and that I wish for you love, true love. And I know it's out there because I've got it. The best bait to use is your genuine self. And if you're not the person that you want to be, then start becoming that person and show that person to your future mate. Then you're going to catch someone who's going to love you and not the things that you have and the fake you. So YouTube family, God bless you. I hope this helped and I hope you subscribe and like the video and I'll talk to you soon.